Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cinecalyx, and today we are finally back recording the way we get used to it, the way you guys have gotten used to the volume, to the speed, to the sound, to the flow. So guys, sorry for the that little lapse there in the quality and in the everything, but we're back and we're back at it hard again. Guys, so here we go. We're going to do Battle World today, guys. I'm going to talk to you guys about what Battle World is, why you should do it or why you shouldn't do it and some thoughts about where Battle World is going in the future and stuff like that, okay? And maybe some uh, throwbacks to the to the way things were once upon a time. Cue the Disney music. So, what is Battle World? Battle World is this menu that you get to from the arena portion of the game, okay? It's the third one here, it's called Battle World. It's often abbreviated as BW. And Battle World consists of uh, usually two sometimes one but most frequently it's always been two uh, as last I can remember uh, two different modes now the modes are basically the same except they have different restrictions and different rewards but the format of all of the modes is the same you pick a five man woman team you pick a five hero villain team and then you fight another five person team either in AI mode which is this top one or in real-time beta battle world uh, open mode and that's when you're actually controlling one of the character's uh, moves. I say one of them because even though it's 5v5, it's not 5-on-5 five five at the same time. That would be chaos if there was 10, um, you know, if there were 10 sprites running around in the game all attacking at the same time. Everyone's phone would fucking die. It would be frame rate hell. Uh, no, it's actually 2v2. And then when a character dies, the next one in the list uh, comes up. So... Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but positioning is important and stuff like that. So uh, it's something to take uh, into consideration. So you have five, you have five v five teams, but you only have two each going out. If it's AI like this top one with Doctor Octopus in combat, then uh, the details are as follows. Okay, holy cow! Once this loads, it's going to show me my rank at the bottom here. I haven't played it yet, so I have no rank. It's going to show me the rewards. These rewards with the dimension chests are actually kind of scumbag because it says it's a six star, but that's only actually for the top ranking people. Okay, for people who are going to rank in these percentages, which is the vast majority of people playing, they get five star dimension chests. So it's kind of scumbaggy, but whatever. So I need to use Doctor Octopus or Superior Spider-Man. It doesn't matter if the uniforms on or not. And then I need to use four more combat types. So as you guys can see, as I said, it's a team of five. And then you can see that number one and number two are kind of bigger boxes because it's indicating to you that those are your starting, your starting two, okay? So let's say I wanna go with um, this team here. It's not the best team I can field because there's no Groot and there's no Kingpin, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna show you guys how this plays out. Let's get to throw Iron, uh, not Iron Man. Uh, let's throw Hulk in there, I like Hulk. All right, so we go ahead. And then it's going to show us another team that we can fight against. If we hit fight, we have to pay three of these Stark Blueprints. Honestly, if you don't have enough Stark Blueprints to run Battle World, you probably shouldn't be running Battle World in the first place. Uh, obviously, if you don't have enough characters or if your characters aren't of sufficient level, then you might consider um, how frequently you run Battle World. But in general, it's better to run Battle World than not. And I'll explain why in a minute. So just try and have as many, uh, at least a minimum number of Stark uh, branded blueprints as you need for Battle World. So it's three per fight. There are 20 fights per 24 hours. So that's uh, 60 of these per day. Okay, so you see there I have 20 fights available and I can search for a new opponent, but I only have 20 tries. So if I search for a new opponent now, okay, the score is the same, but this team looks slightly more uh, challenging, but let's fight them now and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna get 75 points. Uh, as I progress and my score goes higher than the scores of my opponents and their difficulty and the number of high level characters they have will increase kind of like timeline battle and then that'll increase my battle world score if I win and it will deduct a larger number if I lose. So here we go guys, this is the non live battle world, this is just the AI battle world but as you guys can see I can click out of autoplay if I want and I can start controlling superior Spider-Man but I don't want to do that because I'm talking to you boys. I can also switch to Giant Man. So if I press Giant Man's portrait on the left here, it's gonna switch to Giant Man. There we go, it takes a couple of clicks to switch. As, as you guys can see now, the camera is centered around Giant Man. My uh, skills have changed, and now I can take it off auto and I can start playing as Giant Man. Okay, where's my girlfriend so I can slap her in the face? JK. Uh, but there you go. 
Uh, now there you go, it'll give you this, this little obvious victory screen. You can screenshot this and post on the Reddit to annoy everyone because everybody does that. But here's the most important part, Battle World Participation Reward. It's just like back at when you guys were kids and you went to some special camp or some kind of um, martial art boot thing or whatever and you got a participation award. You know, you were a special daisy, you were a, a special little flower, a unique snowflake, and so you got a, an award just for showing up. That's what Battle World is, guys. Even if you get absolutely trashed in every single match, you will still get these participation rewards. And as you guys can see, it's one out of five to get to 10,000 gold, and it'll increment by 10,000 gold for every five wins. So for 20 wins, you get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and 40,000, which by my math is 100,000 gold just for going into the Battle World and pressing these buttons 20 times. 100,000 gold is a pretty good amount, especially for newer players, and it only costs you these Stark branded blueprints, which I believe you get from story missions. I'm not 100% sure, but you get them from somewhere. I don't know where you get them from, and I don't know um, exactly why you get them, because other than Battle World, they don't have a real purpose. But I do know that I have a shitload of them, so they must be giving them out quite regularly. Where are they? Yeah, I have 25,000. So uh, where do we find these? Let's find out. All right, story missions. See, it doesn't even tell me that they're a drop, but they are a drop in story missions. Riveting stuff, guys. I'm really giving you the hard-hitting facts here. So, guys, that's the uh, that's the base of Battle World. I'll quickly show you guys the open Battle World because it's a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I still I have a mandatory hero. In this one, it's uh, not Doctor Octopus; it's Iron Fist. And then I have to pick six star heroes. Six star heroes. I can't pick villains. I like villains, but I have some pretty dirty scumbag six star heroes. So this team looks pretty broken. I wish I had Groot tier two because then this team would actually be like shitty for other people, not for me. So here you do not get to select, select your opponent. It's all surprise. Uh, the good thing about this hero battle world is you won't have any Black Order characters. So all of the free to play salty dogs out there can't bitch and moan about this battle world because there are no Thanoses to rain giant blue balls uh, down on their chins. Uh, so no balls to the chin this time, guys. But hopefully they'll do the villains one because I really like the villains one. Anyways, uh, this is a live battle world, guys. Oh, we have another tier two Ant-Man. Cool. So as you guys can see, it's not auto. This is all manual, but it's only for my character. So the other character is still being controlled by the AI. So this is not true live. I mean, this is about as live as it's going to get, guys. Uh, talking about nightclubs in Toronto circa 2000. But um, yeah, this is basically it. It looks like a mishmash, and it basically just looks like a shitstorm of uh, the regular battle world except there's a little bit more strategy that goes into it. Um, if you play this one long enough, you'll see people just being jerks and running around in circles, uh, waiting for their best character's best skill to uh, come off cooldown. For example, uh, Proxima and her six star skill. I've played against plenty of people who just run around with her until the six star is up, and then they use it uh, to its effectiveness. One thing, guys, you wanted to keep in mind here is my Moon Knight is currently targeting Sharon Rogers. If I want to switch that, I have to press the portrait of the other hero, and now he's char targeting that tiny, tiny uh, Hulk Buster. So if you want to double team a really strong opponent to wither them down faster, which I highly recommend, you will need to uh, switch one of the characters from their original assignment to the other one. So in this case, it doesn't matter anymore because we only have one left. But what I should have done, because Moon Knight was already targeting Sharon Rogers, I should have switched to Ant-Man and then switched to Sharon Rogers targeting. But there you guys go. That's how you do live Battle World. There was a little uh, blurb at the top right corner, a little um, caption thing where you can press it with three dots and you can uh, kind of taunt your opponent with some hilarious uh, words and you can kind of troll them, but whatever. Uh, this also tells you the rewards here, guys. Uh, of course, the higher your rank, the better your rewards. And again, guys, the participation rewards, so important. The participation rewards are also split, so that means that even though I've played one battle world in each mode, I have I have two separate participation rewards uh, accumulating. So basically, I have 40 entries here, and this ends in six hours, so I do not have enough time to do all of them, but I could technically get 200,000 gold. So. Like I said, even if you absolutely suck, it, as long as you can meet the requirements, as long as you have Dr. Octopus unlocked and you have four other combat characters, just play Battle World if you have time. It's worth the gold alone. I know it hurts and your ego will be crushed when you get absolutely slapped around by people like me, 
but in the long run, it'll add to your gold and it'll make it better and easier for you to rank up your character's gears, save up gold for Black Order, uh, rank ups, and stuff like that. So ba Battle, World is, Battle World is excellent. I really, really like it. Now, I talked to you guys a little bit about positioning. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that now. So, for example, we have this one here. Um, positioning is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, you want to put characters who are weaker generally at the front. Um, there is no hard evidence to suggest this, but there are a few people that uh, have said that if you have a lower ranked character in the front, it usually pairs you up with a lower ranked opponent overall. Now, hopefully Netmarble has fixed their coding so it takes an aggregate uh, gauge or rating of your team and not just the first one. But if that's still the case, it's good to do that, which is why when I did the other battle world, I put my no mastery uh, Doc Ock first. Um, I still see people hiding them at the end. I really don't understand the logic behind that. Um, secondly, you, you want to nestle your best uh, players, your best heroes in the middle or at the end. And there's two reasons why you want to do that. Um, if they have their best characters at the front, you want to do some chip damage before you bring out your big guns. Um, and having them in the middle kind of makes the character come in in the middle of animations so they're less likely to get caught off guard by big attacks that come at the very beginning when the cooldowns first reset at the beginning of the fight. So you're less likely to get, you know, surprise ganked uh, in the middle of the fight than you are at the beginning. And it's also harder for targeting and there's more chaos going on so it's, it's a little bit easier to maneuver and stuff like that. Also having your best characters at the end because if things are really going south, I usually like to put my Ant-Man at the end if he's an eligible character because if things are really going south and I can and I think I can salvage them, let's say the guy has two two guys left, he has two heroes left and they just killed my Groot and I just have Ant-Man, I can take it off auto if, it, if I'm not playing the dual one. Uh, I can take it off auto and I can manually control Ant-Man and usually pull out a win that way for my own sense of pride and for my, my big balls. So uh, that's another reason why you want to put your high-level characters at the end. Uh, another thing, guys, another tip, it's not so useful nowadays in Battle World, but back in the day when Thor, Jane Foster, and believe it or not, even Nebula and Lincoln were popular uh, players in Battle World, it is so fucking broken if you have Groot with the uniform on because he's lightning immune, so those characters do absolutely no damage. So I would uh, intentionally queue into teams that had multiple lightning damage users, knowing full well that I'm basically getting a free win against them. So um, I can't do it in the dual battle world because it's not going to show me the queue of opponents to choose from. And I can't uh, run Groot with the uniform on in this battle world because it's combat only and his uniform changes into universal. But you guys can imagine that if I could scroll through my enemies and find a bunch of uh, lightning damage users here this way, then I can take advantage of that fact and punish players more easily with my Groot. Also having characters that support like Wasp or Groot in the middle or towards, not probably not towards the end, basically you wanna put them in this, the second, third or fourth slot is best because they can come in and immediately be of help to characters who might be dying um, by using their uh, healing or shielding skills respectively. So guys, those are my thoughts about Battle World. Um, Definitely something you should play, definitely something that you should get involved in, and it's really good, guys. Uh, I know I'm not a model citizen, I'm not giving a good example to the to the youngins out there because I haven't participated enough, but it's always good, guys, to participate in these in the, the beta stuff and in the stuff where it's dual and it's live because this is all precursor stuff. I've been setting, I've been saying this a lot, but it's really, really important to repeat. Uh, all of these things that are beta or that are in testing, test them. Do the work uh, you know, create the data for Netmarble to, to, to comb through and to, to create, you know, uh, better scores and better graphs for because it's just going to uh, improve the quality of new uh, game modes that we get and it will increase how quickly we get those new game modes. I can't think of any game modes right now that we are missing um, that are blue with a, with a lock on them, but there's probably at least one that I can think of if I sat down after the video and I tried. Um, one you know kind of game mode that uh, requires there to be a live connection and would be really really hype and awesome if they introduced it but I'm guessing that they can't yet because they don't have you know enough server quality or stability or they're still working out the kinks with latency and ping and stuff like that 
So uh, hopefully my P didn't pop there, guys. And hopefully uh, you can see the value and the worth in Battle World. Even if you're a veteran and you don't need the gold, please, guys, play it as I should be doing very, very soon. Get those uh, scores in. And, of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.